So now, are you ready to start with the event? We have a lot of things to share with you today, with a lot of experts here. So what we do at the Center for Collective Intelligence is to focus our work on people collaborating with computers. Whether computers are robots, computational devices, or communication tools. And I'm going to start with two main messages that I want you to leave today in the conference. First is that we should spend less time thinking about people or computers, and more time thinking about people and computers. Less time about how many jobs computers are going to take from us, and more time about how we can connect people and computers to create better jobs, or maybe better ways of working together. And the second message, can I have the slides, please? There it is. That was the first message. And the second message is how to see ghosts. I have some. Can you check that? OK. Perfect. Sorry. How to see ghosts? Well, of course, not real ghosts, right? But these kind of entities that we think that are everywhere, and we call them superminds. And when we talk about superminds, we define it as groups of individuals acting together in ways that they seem intelligent. We think that these superminds are around us all the time. And what we did is to divide them in different types so we understand what are the superminds that are around us. And we divide them in the way they make decisions. So the first one are the hierarchies. And the idea is that to make decisions, they delegate them into individuals, into the group. Think about, for example, universities, companies, even governments themselves. They make decisions throughout their hierarchies. The second ones are the democracies, where they vote to make that decision collectively. The third kind of superminds, we call them markets, where decisions are made essentially by combining lots of agreements between buyers and sellers. And the fourth one are the ecosystems, which the, sorry, the communities, with which to make decisions, we have here informal consensus based on shared norms and reputation. So think, for example, about neighborhoods or even some group at Facebook. All these four types of superminds, they have some kind of agreement or cooperations to make decisions. Whenever they don't have those kind of cooperations or agreements to make decisions, we think that a supermind can be an ecosystem and many times involve many other, many other superminds, where the law of the jungle is what prevails and the survival of the fittest. So, sorry. So the first thing. The first thing you see in these superminds is that almost everything we have achieved as a humankind was done by a group of individuals working together and, and not by individuals themselves. From, for example, the first languages, for example, uh, the first goal to live in society, or even the soup union that I want to eat tonight after this conference, right? So now, when we think about how we can connect people on computers, we think, OK, we can make these superminds smarter. That's how we can use computer. And the first example that comes to our mind whenever we start thinking about this collective group of people working together and using technology to enhance this intelligence is Wikipedia, which is the largest encyclopedia our planet has ever known. Of course, it's possible to make supermind stupid things, right? Or even to be evil. Imagine also a lot of people collaborating together and using technology to develop fake news, or deep fakes, or even perpetrating a terrorist attack. Of course, that can happen as well. But we think that if we use these superminds together with computers and technology wisely, we think that we are going to be able to solve our problems better than ever before. So one 
way of framing the question that we always try to think about this relation is how people and computers be connected so that collectively they can act more intelligently than any person, group or computer has ever done before. And in order to think about this, we have to talk about the two different types of intelligence that we have. We have the specialized intelligence, which is the ability to achieve specific goals in a given environment. And we have a general intelligence, which is the ability to achieve a wide range of goals in a wide range of environment. Now, here is something that most of the people don't know. Even the most advanced computer today, think, for example, about IBM Watson, right? have only specialized intelligence. This computer, IBM Watson, or AlphaGo, was really trained for a specific task, which was, in this case, to place Jeopardy, this very famous TV show in the US, or AlphaGo, to play Goals and beat the person. But that machine was trained to really work on that. If you compare that very, very smart computer with a five-year-old kid, I'm sure that that five-year-old kid is more intelligent because it has general intelligence, so it's able to have a deeper conversation about a wide variety of topics, much more than that computer. So that's the state of the art today. But one frequent question that we have, and I think that we will try to answer in this conference today, is that, Will that change? We will be able to have computers as smart as we are, or even smarter than we are. Well, you know that at MIT, it started a lot of, we do a lot of work around artificial intelligence. And this field has been, it's not something new, although now we talk a lot about AI, but it has been developing during the last 50 or 60 years. And it's something, very, very normal, common, that we say, well, during the next 20 years, we're going to see these computers that are going to be smarter than people or are going to be able to have this general intelligence to be able to be as smart as human beings. So, theoretically, that's, this could happen. It could happen in the near future. But it, whenever we discuss about it at the, at the center, at the CCI, we say, well, I don't think maybe I'm going to see this in my life. During the next 20 years, it's going to be difficult. So the idea is, in the meantime, what do we do? How do we solve the problems that we have using people and computers to face all these challenges? So a better way to start thinking about this is that let's reflect on the superminds. As we said, along history, it has been a group of people that have been able to achieve almost everything we've done as human beings, right? So instead of thinking about individual people connected with computers, like we say here, humans in the loop with computers, we have to think about how this group can connect with computers to really achieve those tasks. Those tasks sorry. And really think about the ability of having hyperconnectivity that give us today's computers and communicational devices and robots to really be connected into each other and be able to use the specialized intelligence that computers have to really develop all these tasks used by general intelligence that human beings have. So our proposal certainly is to move from humans in the loop perspective to computers in the group to be able to achieve all the things we are saying. So now the question that I want to leave you with, and it's kind of opening this debate that we will have uh, along the day with the a, with a, with a following presentation, is how can we create more intelligent human-computer groups? Thank you. <laughs>